Today's Mass is offered for Iggy Bulware and Jane Bland. Entrance Antiphon. Turn to me and have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am alone and poor. See my lowliness and suffering, and take away all my sins, my God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, as we come to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us, and grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind people of these things and charge them before God to stop disputing about words. This serves no useful purpose, since it harms those who listen. Be eager to present yourself as acceptable to God, a workman who causes no disgrace imparting the word of truth without deviation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Teach me your ways, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, he teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, This is the first. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, 
and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's a couple times a year that this gospel from one of the synoptics, Mark, Matthew, or Luke, that this gospel comes to us on our daily readings. And for me, I think it's, it seems like it's spaced out beautifully. So it's like a quarterly or every four-month check-in. That when the scribe comes to question Jesus, he seems like it's a sincere request. Like, what is the greatest commandment? Like, what's your opinion? He could have been testing him, but when Jesus answers, you know, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength... And the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. The scribe gives his own affirmation, his own belief that knowing that this is the true way that the, that the Lord has taught us to love above all. And I think it's a beautiful check-in for us then every three to four months as we get it in the daily readings, just to kind of do an examination. Where are we in our journey to love as Jesus teaches us? The first thing that we have to do is that we love not out of duty or obligation, but we love out of response of his love. That we look at the cross and we see Jesus who loves us with his whole heart, his whole mind, his whole strength, to the point of being emptied out of everything. The blood and water that flowed from his side as a sign that he gave all for us. And so if we see him loving us that passionately, if we see him loving us so completely, then, how, then it, it makes sense for us then to let our lives be a loving response to Him. To love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love our neighbor as ourself. So it begins not out of our own ability to love, but instead to be so filled with Him, with Jesus, that we cannot help but share that which He gives so freely. So how today can we love, and that's today and, and moving forward, how can we love God with all that we are? What does that invitation look like for you? And how, when you hear that, like, how can I love God more and more? The thing is, it's in St. Augustine, you say, he says, love first and then do what you want. Because if our love is true and authentic, it will only come as a response to the truth that God, who is love. And so we cannot help but be motivated by keeping that relationship strong and intimate. Love first and then do anything because we will only be motivated by that love. And I love that second part. Sometimes I think, you know, like, okay, love God and all that we are good and then love neighbor, got it, and then we just have to do more. But it's as yourself. I think so often we forget that. That at times when perhaps we're at a place where we are losing patience with others, perhaps we're, we're frustrated with others, and we, we just kind of move towards that, that way, that road of frustration or loss of patience, what usually is the cause of that is that first we've already lost patience with ourselves, or that we're frustrated in ourselves. And sometimes then we need to realign ourselves with the mercy of God, to realize that He loves us not because we're perfect, but he loves us in our weakness. And it's his love that then perfects us. And he gives us the beautiful gift of confession. He gives us the beautiful gift of being reconciled to him through his grace. Not our action, but his. So maybe we take a few moments and just reflect on how we might love God more fully. How we might allow him to define who we are. How we can allow him to show us what it means to have a deep and true humility and love of self because when we start there it becomes as a flowing to love others but it's only again through that first love of God
we offer our prayers and our petitions. For our church, may the Holy Spirit help us in never ceasing to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all corners of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, may God write upon their hearts the first of all commandments as they guide their people in their daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For prisoners, for persons incarcerated wrongly, and for political prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community gathered in prayer, especially those who experience doubt, may the Lord's grace enkindle hearts of steadfastness and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they soon meet God face to face and live in his kingdom forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those prayers we hold in the silence of our heart, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we lift before you these our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be in accord with your will. For we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Trusting in your compassion, O Lord, we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Thank <sighs> you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, the bread of the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have this year to go to age, we may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take Amen. away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
our communion names upon. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Let us pray. Governed by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we may merit to enter the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 